This video is sponsored by Loop Deck. What's happening team? Today I'm taking this little beauty through its paces, the Loop Deck CT, a professional editing console for creative editors. Whether you're a photo editor, video or music editor, the Loop Deck CT will supercharge your editing workflow and take it to another level. Here's how, play tape. So this all-in-one, cross-platform, fully customizable device comes with native plugins for Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Capture One Pro, and there's a full list on the screen. Loop Deck also provide downloadable pre-made profiles for software like Cubase and DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is what I use to make these YouTube videos. Plus, you can build your own custom profiles using macros and shortcuts for pretty much any software you can think of. So this thing is very versatile. I'll put chapters throughout the video, but I'll try and keep things as short, concise, and detailed as possible. And if I find anything that needs improvement, then that's good feedback for the people at Loop Deck HQ. So first up, packaging and build quality. First impressions are everything in the tech industry. Apple set the benchmark for presentation of their products with high-end materials and beautiful packaging. If a company cares as much about what's on the outside, then it's likely that they're gonna care as much about what's on the inside goes the theory. Loop Deck have certainly impressed me with their presentation. The box is beautiful. It comes with this beautiful iridescent trim on the outside and a nice velvety interior. Plus it comes with a braided USB-C cable. Nice touch Loop Deck. The console is a really nice design I have to say. Made with high quality materials, aluminium front plate and a nice soft ratcheted dial. Ooh. They also have a confident push action for added customization, which I'll go into further in the video. The size is also very appealing, 16 by 15 centimeters and 365 grams. So a handy laptop companion for traveling about. So the main screen is their jewel in the crown. It's touch sensitive, it's swipeable for multiple windows, and it's fully customizable with infinite possibilities. And yes, you heard me right, infinite possibilities. And the console has haptic feedback to let you know when an input is registered, or in layman's terms, it vibrates a bit. Also, these side panels offer additional swipeable options to the dials. Uh, the navigation wheel has a nice smooth action for scrubbing timelines in video editors, zooming on photo editors, or simply scrolling down a web page, for instance. The wheel has a touch sensitive screen as well with customizable zones, or if you just fancy a clock face, then that's completely up to you. Uh, one thing I would say about the screen, it is quite sensitive. So if you're performing an action with the wheel, um, you can touch the screen by mistake and activate another operation. So just one thing to bear in mind. All in all, build quality on the Loop Deck CT is really good, with a nice aluminium front plate and dials. Uh, the screen is very responsive. So the software which accompanies the console has an intuitive virtual interface, which is a digital representation of the actual console. And this is where all the magic happens. The panels are divided into five sections, the touch screen, the dials, the round buttons, square buttons, and finally the navigation wheel. So let's begin with the main touch screen, and I'm gonna move over to the Mac operating system profile using the application drop-down list here. And we can see we've got a whole bunch of plugins here and custom profiles, and I'm gonna choose the Mac operating system. And we can see we've got a whole bunch of useful buttons here like system preferences, and we've got uh, launch pad and spotlight. So pretty useful stuff. But say we don't use emojis, um, but because we're a photographer, a button for opening Lightroom Classic would be quite useful. So if we just click on the window, we can either just take that button and drag it to the bin, or we can use the actions panel over here on the left-hand side, and we can either start digging down into find activate Lightroom Classic, or we can simply type in Lightroom in the search bar, and it will pop up and then we can just drag that on top of the emoji button. But say we want Lightroom Classic in a more prominent spot on the console, we can simply drag it to a different button and they will swap places and the console updates instantly. Now, while I remember, a really cool feature on the Loop Deck CT is what's called dynamic mode. I have Photoshop, 
Lightroom and DaVinci Resolve open on my Mac. And because I have the dynamic mode checked, it knows which software I have active and changes that profile accordingly. So let's head back to Lightroom and the console is ready with that profile. Pretty neat. Now the main touchscreen can have multiple windows. In fact, as many as you want. And here in the Lightroom profile, we've got a basic adjustment page and a develop presets page. But say we want a third page, we can click on the add new page here. We'll rename this to Mark's new page and click add. Now we can start adding in buttons or presets or anything you like. So let's just choose, we'll go down to optics and we'll choose lens correction. We'll just drag that on. And then let's say we want to open it in Photoshop. We can just type in open, open image in Photoshop pops up. And if we head back to Lightroom now, we can see if we swipe to the third page, we now have lens correction and open in Photoshop. So if I click that, it applies the lens correction and then open in Photoshop should open the image in Photoshop. Now the dials make editing in Lightroom an absolute doddle with extremely quick and precise inputs. If we head over to the virtual console and click the corresponding dials, um, we can see that we have rotate exposure up or down and we can press the dial to reset the exposure. Same for the highlights, shadows, blacks, whites and contrast. On page two, I have secondary adjustments like rotate clarity up or down and reset clarity. So let's head over to Lightroom and see this in the real world. So we're on exposure, we're on page one and we can bring the exposure up or down and we can press the reset. Highlights could come up a bit. Contrast, we can make a bit more contrasty. On page two, we can swipe up for clarity and we can just bring the clarity up a bit. Um, sharpness, we can bring up. Actually, clarity looks awful, so we can reset that. Now, one thing I have found slightly annoying with the touchscreen is the color accuracy. Now, if we head over to the built-in profile for the HSL sliders in Lightroom, we've got the red dials over here, and we've got the orange dials over here. But to my eye, the red looks more like orange, and the orange looks more like yellow. If we slide up for the next set of colors, we've got yellow over here, which is very desaturated, and the green over here looks more like aqua. Not a big deal, and I'm not colorblind, so Loop Deck might want to just have a look at those colors, see if they can get more saturation, a bit more accuracy. Worth mentioning. Now, you just saw me use one of the RAN buttons to access a color adjustment workspace. So if we click on the buttons on the virtual console, we can see that assigned to button one, we have rating simplified library. Button two, we have basic adjustments, which we've been using in the video already. And button three, which is what we just pressed, is assigned to color adjustments two. On button eight, we have nothing assigned to this button yet. So Loop Deck's Lightroom profile has a built-in exporting workspace, which is over here. So if we just click into that for a second, we can see we have a bunch of useful things like select all, uh, open export in DNG, and for email. And we can assign this entire workspace to button eight. So if we head back to the buttons, we can drag this entire tree onto that button. And the button's now turned green to signify that it's a workspace. Um, you'll notice that purple buttons signify an action. You'll also notice that each of these buttons has a secondary option, which is accessed by using the function button on the actual console. And we can assign workspaces and actions to those as well. So if we just grab um, a black and white preset, we can drag that onto the secondary button number eight. We'll head over to Lightroom now and we'll see this in action. We'll press the function and eight and that will apply the preset. And simply pressing number eight, we'll then open up the workspace for exporting. So let's take a look at this wheel for a second. So let's head over to the basic adjustment workspace and we'll click on wheel pages. And we currently have three wheels at the moment and the first wheel is set at in list format. So if we head over to Lightroom, um, we can see that we've got exposure set. We can use the wheel to bring up the exposure. Um, contrast, we can bring down or up. Um, highlights, we can bring down a bit. Or if we don't like that, we can double tap to reset but I'd like to add a new wheel with a different kind of layout. So let's head back to 
loop deck and we'll click add new page and we'll, sh we'll call this marks new wheel and we can choose from a different set of layouts here. I'm going to go with a simple one, two, three, four and click add. Now I'm going to add four different things in here. I'm going to start off with sharpening and let's bring that on and let's do uh, noise. We can bring in noise to there. Uh, we'll do vignette and we'll bring that on. And finally, we'll do grain and we'll drag that onto there. And currently the default is set to sharpness. I'd like it to be set to vignette. And also I'd like this wheel to be the first that shows up in the default state. So if we head back to Lightroom now, we have our new wheel set and it's set to vignette as default. So we can add a bit of a vignette there. We could click on noise reduction. We could add a touch of noise reduction, maybe 15. Uh, sharpness, we can take that up to about 60, which is where I kind of like it. And grain amount, we can just add a touch of grain, maybe 30. So let's look at the Photoshop profile for a second because this is where Loop Deck really grabs my attention. So let's head over to Photoshop for a second. And there's a couple of things that I like to do in Photoshop and that's use actions and keyboard shortcuts to do really quick tasks. So if I open up my actions panel here, you can see I've got a my gradient map and my high pass filter. I've got a dodge and burn action as well. Also, there's a keyboard shortcut that I like to use, which is control, alt, shift and E. And that stamps the layers down to one layer. And we can either convert that to a smart object or I can apply my high pass filter action. And if we zoom in on the face, whoop, that was too close, um, we can see that that has now applied that action. But guess what? Loop Deck can do all this for me. So let's head over to the control panel and change the application to Photoshop. And if we access the touch screen, I'll go to my second screen and I've got a couple of free squares here. So I'm gonna add in my uh, Photoshop actions, which I've just showed you. And that's gonna be my burn and dodge and my gradient map and my high pass filter. I also want to add that keyboard shortcut that I showed you and you can do that using uh, a custom action. And let's call this my stamp. The keyboard shortcut was Control, Alt, Shift and E. And we can also add an icon to that. And I'm gonna use a little boot picture here and we'll click save. So now I'm going to add in that my stamp onto there and I'm also going to do a convert to smart object. So I'm going to bring that onto there as well. Let's head back to Photoshop and let's create our burn layer, our dodge layer. Um, we can stamp down the layers and we can convert it to a smart object. Or if we don't want to do that, we can undo and we can create a high pass filter on top. Boom. Also, a little note to the people over at Loop Deck headquarters. The zoom feature on Photoshop is absolutely beautiful. It's really smooth and I love using it. However, if you like to use rulers in your workspace, the zoom feature becomes very sluggish and I know it's nothing to do with my machine because if I use my mouse to use the same feature, it's fine. So there might be a little gremlin in the software that needs checking out. The downloadable custom profile for DaVinci Resolve is really very useful. Even though you don't have full API capabilities like Premiere Pro or any sort of color grading options yet, you can really speed up your editing workflow using the Loop Deck CT. So a few final thoughts about the Loop Deck CT. I've been using it for about two weeks now and I have to say I am really impressed with how versatile and solid this thing is. Switching between applications seamlessly and speeding up my workflow editing way quicker than I had before I owned it. Okay, let's talk about the price tag for a second. £469. Ooh, that is a lot of money, I know. 
but I do think it's worth it. If you're a professional editor or a very keen amateur where you're producing high quality content at a rate of knots, this is gonna save you a huge amount of time and money in the long run, so. Okay, thanks for watching team. I hope this was helpful. Um, thanks for the support over the last few years. My channel's almost at 100,000 subscribers, so well chuffed with that. I'll catch you next time.